country, this. Oh, Australia's all right. The England will send us fewer criminals and more sheep herders. We might get somewhere. I understand that our prize outlaw has just come down from New South Wales. Stingery. 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 Mercy on us. Oh. <laughs> I'm not worried. No? Certainly not. Stingery's never had a really good man after him before. And now I suppose he's riding straight to his doom. Straight. <laughs> Oh, Hugh! Hugh! Is that you? It generally is, my dear. Oh, Hugh! Did you bring my puppy? Uh, yes, Victor, just taking it into the house. Yes, well, it's about time. Oh, Mr. Redford, what a charming surprise. Do come in. Oh, sorry. Now, now, I won't take no for an answer, you bad man. <laughs> I always say, even if we do live in the backwoods, there's always hospitality. I do love hospitality, don't you? I... Uh... Oh, Hilda! No, not another word, Mr. Redford. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Mrs. Cox, I really have to... Good afternoon, Miss Hilda. Good afternoon. Hilda, your hair. And my dear child, a huge spot on your dress. Now, Rhea. Well, I've been putting up the jelly. That is no excuse for suddenliness. And I hope Mr. Radford will forgive your appearance just this once. I'm sure Miss Hilda always looks... Uh, thank you, Mr. Radford. And now, Hilda, go and tell Annie to get the tea ready. It's all ready, Mrs. Clarkson. All ready? Well, why didn't you tell me so? Well, I've been waiting for the chance. <laughs> Hilda's a good girl, you know, but... Uh, no. Hold on, here. Uh, here's a letter you've been waiting for. Hugh, is it? Yes, Sir Julian. He's on his way by oh, coach. Oh, he's coming at last. And my new dress is just in time for the party. Oh, you must see it, Mr. Radford. No, I mean, I mean you must come to the party. And the Mackenzies and the McIntyres, but not the Floyds. I'll send Victor around to everyone. Thursday night, a party for Sir Julian Kent. Who is Sir Julian Kent? Why, Mr. Rafford. Surely you know Sir Julian Kent, the famous composer from London. Really? Is he a friend of yours? Oh, yes, indeed. Why, an intimate friend. Well, that is uh, not exactly, but uh, he will be soon. He's a friend of Sir Basil's. Sir Basil insisted that he meet me. Yes, I wonder why Sir Basil... Uh... Why, you, you know the main reason. Well, so Sir Julian could hear me sing. I had a great future ahead of me, Mr. Radford. Once. Uh, well, well, I must be going along. Oh, oh, oh you were coming into tea, weren't you? Uh, no, no, my dear, he wasn't coming in. Uh, remember? Oh, I I'm so sorry. We'll see you on Thursday. Thank you. <laughs> Keep an eye out for Sir Julian, will you, yeah. Redford? Right. I may meet him at the coach station. Oh, the thing. <laughs> Sir Julian here. Me, 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 No, I, I've no time for that now. I must stop practicing at once. Has Sir Julian come? He, he's on his way. Uh, yes, uh, put it down. I want you to play for me. Oh, this is the moment I've been waiting for all my life. Me, 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 me
Hilda's big chance, too. May I sing for him, Mrs. Clarkson? Why, of course, my dear. I've thought of it day and night ever since you told me he was coming. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, I promised Mrs. Mackenzie to send you over there tomorrow. Oh, please. She needs you to look after her children or she can't come to the party. Don't send me away. Why, what difference can it make? Nonsense. I've told you often enough. You have no voice. Let him tell me. A girl in your position should be thankful enough that three meals a day are given her instead of... I don't see why she shouldn't sing for Sir Julian. You know how much it means to her. I shall manage my own household. Hilda must go tomorrow. Do you want your tea or don't you? The tea's still in black. Go away, Annie. I'm practicing. No peace from not even a tea time. What with no water, rabbit tears and stinky realise ain't worth living. <laughs> Uh, we'll, uh, we'll begin here. <coughs> <coughs> Go ahead, start. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. The sea has pearls for pretty girls and a thousand other things. So I'd rather be a fisherman Can't you play with more expression? Well, perhaps not quite so much expression. Then a king! Well, thank goodness I shall have a professional accompanist on Thursday night. Uh, Among the kings, your ho, your ho, your ho, your ho! I wish I were a fisherman. I sail the sea fishing. Good boy. Understand my orders? Yes. See you. Don't forget them. Well, don't get any smart ideas of your own. Use mine. Right. And, and don't forget, killing's all right, too. As long as we get sting to be. Big pardon, sir. But those in the service of our noble queen, sir, shouldn't drink too heavily, sir. See what I mean? To warm the cockles of my hair. Why do you want to, Mark? I'm freezing. Are you? Here, man. I'll lend you my shawl. You can warm too, sir, Julian, while we change the awesome. Thank you. Certainly, sir. Uh, I'll hang your hat and coat up, sir. See what I mean? Excuse me, sir. Are you Sir Julian Kent? Yes. Mr. Clarkson asked me to look out for you. It's very nice, sir, Mr. Clarkson. The rat was the name. Police inspector. Oh, why, so many of you. We've just had word that Stingaree may be near here. Well, that's the gentleman the chap's been singing about. Yes. But I'm prepared for him. I'm glad. I'm not. Good 
evening, Good sir. Good evening. Full house, haven't you? Or is it a royal flush? <laughs> <laughs> You're a god, sir. See what I mean? You're a stranger, too, aren't you? Uh, you're a little nervous, aren't you? <laughs> Limey! Nice little tune, isn't it? Slime, sir. You think I can make a sale here in Victoria? Oh, so you're Mr. Uh, Smithson. Just down from Sydney. Inspector of Police. Delighted. You know, I always feel especially safe when the police are around. Sir Julian Kent. Yes. May I welcome you? I heard that you were coming here. That's why I am here in spite of this foul weather. Pretty flattering, I'm sure. But I don't believe we've met. Oh, that's a mistake I feel sure you'll wish rectified. Whiskey and soda. Make it two. Right, sir. Oh, I beg your pardon. I, uh, I don't suppose you drink while you're on duty. Or perhaps you're not on duty tonight. Now, Mr. Rattle has been telling me of his very onerous duties. Rather hair-raising to a stranger. Indeed. Mm. I've just been telling Mr. Julian that Stingery is in these parts. Stingery? Oh, oh, that's the name of a fish, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yes, with a sting in his tail. They're best left alone, I believe. Well, that's what they think in New South Wales. In these waters, we hang them up in the sun to dry. Really? Uh, what do you use for bait? Brains. Uh, no wonder you don't have any luck. You see what I mean? <laughs> you seem to think this thing's a joke. If you had my job... Yes, I'd get on it. Looking for this tough customer of yours. So sorry, though, if you have to leave us. <clears throat> Rather hard on your countrymen, weren't you? Our countrymen. Oh. You're from England. London. Mm. Whiskey. Make it slippy. Off a moment, Mr. Redford. See what I mean? I wonder if you're missing London at this moment as much as I am. Ah, uh, every moment. Mm. You love it too, eh? Mm, tell me, is it all still there? Covent Garden? Violets wet with rain in Trafalgar Square? <laughs> the girls walking Piccadilly? Oh. Sunset in Green Park? Cafontes in Seoul? And the Thames running so reluctantly to the sea. Like an Englishman leaving home. You are homesy. Sappy. Why could even be romantic about the Queen? Tell me, how is Her Majesty? Oh, well, but sad. Sad? Still mourning for Albert. She refuses to leave Windsor. And the women. Are they still so lovely in England? Under our good Queen, the women of England are the most virtuous in the world. So that's why the prince spent so much time abroad. <laughs> so Wagner's music won't last, huh? Oh, preposterous. I give it two more years. How about the opera, the Savoy? Is that any good? Oh, excellent. Magnificent music. One passage goes like this. You're so interested in music. If I had a pianoforte, I'd play it for you. There isn't one in this province. Oh, yes. The Clarkson have one, I believe, where I'm going to visit. Musicians? Well, Mrs. Clarkson is, I'm told. I don't know them. Wealthy people? Well, they're said to be the wealthiest of these parts. Made their money in sheep. People would insist for some reason on eating mutton and wearing woolen underwear. I dare say Clarkson's laid aside a handsome fortune. What a dull way to live. <laughs> sheep are such boring animals. Mm. <laughs> like this place. Oh, I trust you won't be too bored in Australia. Hey, been robbed! Uh, 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 I was riding over the ridge to Yellow Rook, coming down to take services there tomorrow. It's my first time. It's my first time there, and I lost my way. Well, what happened? It was held up. Oh, was it the man on the white horse? Hey, and another on the black horse. 
Stingery! Now, well, which way did they go? At the fork, they turned to the right. Uh, now, come on, make it easy. Hold your horse. Where are we out of here, Come on, 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 Good job he didn't come here. See what I mean? Aye, laddie. <laughs> Is there any way I can get out of here? Yes. Bail up. Bail up. Stingery? Yes. I'm glad to meet you. Not at all. This is my valet. At your, <clears throat> at your service. Hey, you. Do your bit for England. Music for Sir Julian's exit. If you don't mind. Out of the night riding along. Out of the night singing a song. The stingery appears. A lay of fears. A gentleman is here. The stingery. First time that's ever been said to me in this house. Oh, I should think it'd be said to you every time you sang. I couldn't because I never sing unless I'm alone. I thought I was alone now. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm afraid I startled you. Oh, a little. Do you want to see the Clarksons? Why aren't uh, you, Mrs. Clarkson? No, no, the Clarksons aren't here just now. Will they be back soon? In about two hours. Good. They've gone to meet Sir... Why, you must be Sir Julian Kent. May I come in? Please. Oh, forgive me. But how did you ever get here? The Clarksons have gone to Yalrook to meet the coach. Well, the coach broke down. I came along in a private conveyance. Ah, oh, please sit down. <laughs> Mrs. Clarkson will be furious. Because I came? I wasn't supposed to meet you. <laughs> Is that my reputation? <laughs> I'm waiting for our man to come back now. He's going to take me to the Mackenzie's. I was to leave before you got here. And I was heartbroken. Why? Sir Julian, tell me. Is my voice... Beautiful. With training, you could do anything. You're not just saying that. Oh, you don't know what that means to me coming from you. If I only had a chance. My mother sang. She had great dreams about it. 
She gave them all up to come out here with my father. She died. Left her dreams to me. Who taught you to sing? My father. All I've ever wanted all my life was to be a great singer. I'd do anything. Anything. You can be. I was all alone when he died four years ago. I had no money and the Clarksons took me in. Well, why don't they help you? Oh, Mrs. Clarkson doesn't allow me to sing. I didn't fear with her. I play her accompaniments. We... Oh, I've never talked like this to anyone before. Why don't you leave here? I've no place to go. Sir Julian, help me. Help me. I'll help you. Will you? Oh. <laughs> Do you sing too? I suppose so. I ain't never tried. Well, don't. Don't you tell me with the old Anne cackling all day. Annie! She don't even lay no egg. If it wasn't for Miss Hilda here, I'd go back to London, that I would. And who might you be? Your humble servant. Mm. Well, I, I just thought I'd find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please sing again. We've lots of time before they come. I'm so happy I could sing standing on my head. This way I'll do. I can see your face better. <laughs> Mr. Julian, it's your own song. Well, I still don't like it. <laughs> I've composed a new one. Let me play it for you. Oh. 
killed a blueberry. What have you been up to? Well, I didn't murder Sir Julian. Here he is. Sir Julian? Why, of course, Sir Julian, I would have known you anywhere. But how did you get here? We were on our way to meet you. We met Mr. Radford, who said you'd been stolen by Stingaree. I escaped. I didn't tell Miss Bovary for fear of alarming her. Oh, of course. Nobody minds alarming me, but never mind about poor it and me. Are you sure that you're quite, quite safe? Quite. For the moment. Oh, it's all right. The house is completely surrounded by police. It's splendid. Oh, you must be famished for your tea. Because I, I didn't expect you for tea, Hilda. How do you do? Hilda, why haven't you gone? Victor hasn't come for the mail yet. Well, be ready to leave as soon as he comes. It doesn't matter now. I've sung for Sir Julian. Shh. He says my voice is beautiful. Oh, my dear. You're just trying to be polite. Don't be foolish. I'll get your tea. <laughs> Oh, Abby! Uh, Mr. T. Oh, Mr. Bradford. <laughs> this is Sir Julian. He isn't dead in the least. Isn't it a miracle? We've met, haven't we? Oh, yes. Yes, I remember you now. You've been drinking quite heavily at the time. Maybe so. But I don't think I was quite blind. Well, I'm sure I am. Night falls very quickly in Australia, Sir Julian. I like the lamp. Oh, never mind. Uh, I enjoy the twilight. I must have been drunker than I thought I was. You're not at all like the Sir Julian I met. One of the first requisites of a good police officer is a memory for faces. Oh, please, Sir Julian. Mr. Radford may have had a few drinks. That would have gotten him mixed up, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> oh, well, Hilda, uh, go and see if it just can. <laughs> Has Victor come yet? No, miss. Thank you. Miss Hilda, what did that man say to you? Marvelous things, divine. Such as? That I can have a great career. He's going to help me. That man isn't Sir Julian. What do you mean? He's an imposter. Well, he couldn't be. He said he was going to help me. Oh. But Wagner's music won't last. Preposterous. Well, I give it two more years. <laughs> But the opera at the Savoy is excellent. Magnificent music. It goes like this. Uh, music, I mean. Oh, Mr. Radford, do come and have your tea. Sir Julian's been telling us the most marvelous and exciting things, all about the opera and Wagner and London. I should like to hear Sir Julian tell us how he escaped from Stingaree. I should think you'd be much more interested in making a capture than hearing about escapes. Mrs. Clarkson, I'm a guest in your home. I refuse to be questioned further by Mr. Radford. Oh, Mr. Radford, apologize to Sir Julian. How dare you annoy him when he's just come through such a horrible experience. Let's discuss music. Oh, yes, let's. Oh, Sir Julian, I was fascinated by that last song of yours. Well, perhaps we can hear it. After tea, huh? Oh, no, no, now you impatient man. You'll have to wait until tomorrow evening. I shall sing it for you. What's the name of it? Uh, the name? Oh. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, my. I, uh, I was set there. Um, oh, Sir Julian. Uh, what was it called? <clears throat> my last one? Well, uh, I've forgotten just for the moment. Um... Oh. Forget your own composition, eh? But I have it. I have it. Uh, passion. Or, uh... S something funny like that. Yeah, yeah that, that's it. Passion. Victor's outside and he's waiting for Miss Hilda. 
The name of your song, Sir Julian, is Ecstasy. You through with your bluff now? Mrs. Clarkson, there are laws of hospitality even in this wild country. Or do you make it a point of having your guests insulted? Oh, oh no! Oh, Nancy, what you done? Oh, Mr. Ransom, how could you buy very best? Please, Nancy. Oh, oh, the only good you policemen ever are is when you're on the top of a horse. Oh, oh. I won't be able to see a note tomorrow night. How'd he get away? Couldn't you take care of one man? Well, I could have taken care of him in my own way, but you said to go easy on the bit and to gentle him, and I did. I didn't tell you to give him his head. I didn't. I gave him the music box. What? Well, he just wanted to play it. Music will ruin you and bring you to a bad end. The stuff's poison. Because when Sir Julian started to play on that blooming tune, I, it just lulled me to sleep. Well, go on, watch. Keep your eyes open. If it happens again, I'll lull you to sleep with something that won't be music. Do you follow me? Uh huh. I'm way ahead of you. Well, now that you've got me here, what are you going to do? That depends. On what? You? You'll never get any satisfaction out of me. Oh, I don't know. When a man's been hiding out in the bush as long as I have, he's satisfied with very little. I haven't any money. I'm not speaking of money. You touch me, I'll scream. I believe that's the usual procedure. When you're through making a fool of me. When you're through making a fool of yourself, perhaps you'll give me a chance to say what I've been trying to say. As a matter of fact, I want to help you. How could you help me? Why should you want to? Because I happen to like you. Very much. That's why I took the risk of bringing you here. Risk? Yes. The risk of your being a confounded nuisance. You'll be just as safe here as you want to be. Is this the place you turn? Not exactly sure. It was daylight then. We can try. Well, come on, then. So, you see, I had to get you away from there. Sir Julian is the one man who could help you. Yes. And Mrs. Clarkson was sending you away. Well, I had to do something about it. But I still don't understand. What? How you're bringing me here is going to help me sing for Sir Julian. Well, I don't exactly know myself. Yet, now that Sir Julian has gotten away... But I'm beginning to get an idea. What is it? Wait and see. You have a great voice and a great future. I want you to have it all. Take life in your stride. All of it. How do you do that? By taking everything you want and wanting everything. Do you always get what you want? Always. Sometimes I've had to wait a long time for a coach that I've had designs on. Sooner or later she comes along. Then I rifle her of everything she has to give. For four years, all you've ever thought about has been Hilda, Hilda. Well, I'm, I'm sick of it. You would help her spoil everything I'd ever wanted to do. Well, just because she goes and gets herself stolen, she's not going to spoil my party. Is your party more important than... It's more important than anything else in the world to me. It's the only chance I've ever had in this awful place to do something, to be someone. You never do anything to make me feel important. I'm sorry, my dear. Well, if you're sorry, you let me give my party. I'm sure I, I'm just as sorry as you are that this happened to Hilda. Especially that it happened tonight. 
But even if I called off everything, it wouldn't help us find her, would it? No, I suppose Well, then, not, not another word. If they don't find her tonight, Mr. Radford will keep his men out until they do find her. Besides, nobody who's invited to the party would be helping anyway. Maybe you're right. I, of course I'm right. <laughs> Your song is so lovely. It's your song now. And these are yours too. Oh no. Why not? I haven't any use for them. I really stole... Took them just to see what the London ladies were wearing nowadays. I had no idea I'd have such a beautiful model to try them on. It mustn't be like that. You have great things ahead of you. Which is it to be? Servant girl or singer? Singer. How lovely you are. You love me as much as I love you. Well, I... Say it. And all the rest of my life, I'll hear you saying it. Say it. I... I love... <laughs> Courageous of you, my dear. I, I told Sir Julian that I've always felt that those of us living on the outposts of empire must carry on for our dear queen. That our social obligations must transcend our <laughs> private sorrows. If you refer to your kidnappings, madame, I assure you they're most publicly carried out. Oh, Sir Julian. Oh, quite. With a full audience of police. Mr. Radford always does his best. Bandits are dangerous enough, madame. But Mr. Radford's best is a positive menace. That's why I'm leaving Australia in the morning. Leaving? Oh, Sir Julian, you've let this little matter of Hilda upset you. Why, she's quite all right. Even in this country, we have our code. <laughs> Here come. Uh, women and children first. First for what? Well, I mean that uh, even a bandit must respect English womanhood. Why, the very foundation of empire is woman's virginity. Chastity, madame. Ch Chastity. No empire would get very far with uh, virginity. Uh, oh, um, oh, um, Annie? Uh, help everybody to be seated. Sir Julian. <laughs> Now, Hugh. Now? And everybody seemed to be having such a nice time. Uh, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends, Mrs. Tarkson desires, above all else, to make this night a memorable one for our distinguished guest, Sir Julian Kent. She had prepared a program of songs in his honor, and it seems that nothing will interfere with her courageous intention to, uh, <coughs> to carry on, <coughs> my dear. All right, begin. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> 
singing. I refuse to sing for criminals. Compassion for the outlaw. Thank you. You sit down. I have brought Miss Hilda Bouvery, who's going to sing for Sir Julian Kent. Put your hands down and sit on them. Sit on them. My own cure for chillblains. If you don't like it, Dr. Howie has a stronger medicine. If you please. Hold me close tonight is mine. 
No, but his string is gone. Prison for him. Come back to the house, Hilda. No. You must come. Oh, no, no, let me stay with him. He sang so beautifully. You know, Sir Julian waits for you. And I'll be waiting, too. He'll be taken care of. Thank goodness my friends have all left. Never have I been so humiliated. Oh, Sir Julian, words fail me. Now you've shown yourself for what you really are. A loose, shameless, immoral... Not now, darling. Yes, now. After all I've done for you, making a fool of me in front of all my friends, bringing criminals in while I'm trying to, while I'm singing, taking him out into the woods and, oh, oh, you're a loose, immoral creature. Get out. Don't hear. I mean it. She leaves my house in the morning and stays out. If she goes, I'm going too. Well, birds of a feather. Where can I go? Why did you go back to the woods? I'm leaving in the morning. Would you care to come to London with me? Oh. Oh! Stinky Ray. Stingery. Stinky Ray. Stingery. S-T-I-N-K-E-R-A-A. I can't do it. I can't go. Well, what do you mean? I belong here with him. He gave up the only thing in the world he treasured, his freedom for me. I can't leave him. But you can't help him by giving up the thing he wanted you to have. I believe you have a great career. I'll train your voice. I'll get you placed. It's what he risked his freedom for. But what can you do for him here? Well, I could see him and comfort him. Please understand. I do thank you and... I do want all the things you've offered me, but I'd feel as if I were running away. You'll have to go without me. The young lady's changed her mind. She refuses to leave. Uh, I was afraid that might happen. I've just seen Stingery in prison, my dear. His wound is not serious. He asked me to give you this.
you'll be in Berlin. Then Paris. Voici un morceau de la dernière mode. Quelque chose de très chic, un peu différent. Monsieur Wattin, c'est des années rap pour des grains de boomerang. Permettez-moi, moi, s'il vous plaît. Oh, non, non, poussez-vous. Comme vous êtes belle. I don't like it. Mais, mais ma chérie, c'est le plus beau monde de Paris. Regarde, il coûte 50 000. I don't like it. You don't like it? She don't like it?
triumph, my darling. Pleased? Am I pleased? And tomorrow? And tomorrow? I shall be a peeress of the realm. Hmm. I've traveled a long way, haven't I, Julian? Too long a way, my dear. Not to have forgotten. What? Oh, a great many things. I've never forgotten. Can you forget when you're hungry and thirsty? That's what I've been all the time. Hungry. Miss Hilda. Yes, Annie. There ain't enough room in them trunks. Oh, there must be. No, there ain't. People are giving you presents all the time. There's too much going on around here anyway. Making you get boo one night in your marriage bed the next, but I'm decent. <laughs> well, the debut was perfectly decent, Annie. We'll have to trust the Julian for the rest. Don't trust one of them. Annie. Well, what am I going to do for extra trunk? We've got to be packed tonight. Only have that old canvas one. That'll do. As if I didn't have enough work on my hands. And now I'm in the moon. Is there going to be a honeymoon, Hilda? I know. Hmm. I can't do it. I can't do it. There's only one thing in the world I want. And I'm going back to find it. You're insane. No. No, I've been insane to think I could live without him. But you don't know what you're saying. I'm saying I'm going back to Australia. You can't. You're singing at Lascar in two weeks. No. No, I'm not. I'm not singing any place ever again. But you can't do this mad thing. Give up a great career, position, wealth, everything you've won. And all you've offered me. Yes. All I've offered you. Julian... My career means nothing to me. All the rest means nothing. Without him. Do you realize the Stingaree is a convict? Yes. Yes, so that I might have all this. And he may be free now. Well, if he is, he's penniless. Has nothing. That's how he found me. This is merely some extravagant idea of gratitude. Yes, I'm grateful day and night. Every day that I live. I'm sorry. Will you do one thing for me? May I arrange for you to sing in Melbourne? Yes. Oh, yes. He'd like that. I want you to see where you came from and how far you've gone. Perhaps then you'll realize that this love of yours exists only in your memory and has changed, as all things change with time. Oh, Julian. Yes? S suppose he shouldn't want me anymore.
on, get out of there. Keep your hands up and make it quick. Get over here. This is an outrage. Do you know who this is? I'm going to be very disappointed if it isn't His Excellency, the Governor General. Ah, I'm not disappointed. You're all hang for this. But unless you obey my orders now, it's quite possible that you won't be there to see it. Dear me, I hadn't thought of that. Here, my money is in this pocket. I don't want your money. Good heavens, you don't want my life. I couldn't use it. But I could use your clothes. My clothes? Yes, I'm going to a party tonight, and I happen to admire your tailor. <laughs> if you please. This is an outrage. You'll find that it takes more than clothes to make a gentleman. Perhaps. But in your case, the disguise is almost perfect. It took me so long to get into these confounded things. Well, it's taking you too long to get out of them. Howie, show His Excellency what a good valet you are. Strip him. Oh, do I have to do that? Don't let that dirty ruffian put his hands on me. Oh, so I'm the dirty ruffian, am I? You'll regret this! <laughs> <laughs> now for your pants. <laughs> she certainly is a great disappointment. Yes, it wasn't worth coming to. And the governor not showing up, everything fell flat. Very. Well, why don't you say it? I know how bad I was. That's not so, Hilda. All I know is that he hasn't come. He escaped two weeks ago. I've tried every way to find him. But everyone knows where I am. Why doesn't he come to me? Well, after all, my dear, you can't expect the man to be always risking his neck for you. Julian. Now, my dear, don't you feel too badly that you didn't get more applause? Of course, it's hard on me, for after all, you are my protégé. But I told everybody you'd probably warm up later on. Heavens, am I such a failure as all that? No, you were beautiful, Hilda. No, I wouldn't say failure, but naturally, with the governor not here, it kept it from being a really brilliant event. <laughs> a lot of people would feel insulted, you know, with you a guest in his home and everything. I wonder what could have happened. It was to have been his first public appearance in Melbourne since coming out to Australia. Odd. Are you ready, madam? Oh, yes, yes, all ready, thank you. Now, now, bear up, Hilda, bear up. Oh, <laughs> 
Good night is mine. all fixed up, miss. The governor's got a cold, and he's sitting with his feet in a tub of hot water, barking like a trained seal. Annie, why doesn't he come? Why doesn't he come? Who? Oh, Sir Julian. I sent him to find out what happened. Perhaps Stinky Ree's got him in a ditch with his pants down. Annie. Yes, miss. Fetch me some hot lemonade, will you? Yes, miss. Where is he? Where is he? They haven't caught him. Oh, but that shot, didn't they? The, the chief constable believes he was hit. Oh. But he's probably wrong. On a night as dark as this, I should think it was extremely unlikely. You're not saying that just to make me feel better. Oh, no, my dear. I honestly believe it. Mm. You still love him, don't you? Oh, Julian... You've done so much for me, and I do appreciate it. But when I saw him tonight, I knew that... Did you recognize him in that box? Yes. And you didn't give the warning? Oh. Oh, there, there, my dear. You'd better go to bed and get some rest. If I hear any news, I'll let you know. I 
hope it's good news. Sincerely, my dear. on me this evening was your singing. Oh, you're just the same as you always were. I wondered if you ever remembered. Every hour. That's why I came back. Oh, my dear, before you leave again. I'm not going. I've given up my singing. Tonight I sang for you. I'll never sing again. You'll sing all your life. Every year your fame will grow greater. We decided that long ago. You told me all I had to do was to take what I wanted and to want everything. They both mean you. Here. Tell you that I love you. Oh, please. Please go quickly. The governor will grant me the royal favor. I'll ask for your pardon. Goodbye, my love. Come with me. Now. The same room at Hollow. You'll be just as safe there as you want to be. Oh, I've traveled 10,000 miles to hear that. Up and in the name of the queen! Certainly not. I sent you these myself. Open the door in the name of the Hedge! 